Victim. A putrid pavement blats gouts of corkscrew paranoia, and the air wail of screeching shrapnel reeks with brittle and melted deformity. Society's migraine signal, coronary, my life hunted as a sawed-off menace by mine men, chewing my scumbag brains with their dry files. With their primitive hate accusing me like everybody else, they run me down on withered legs with modulations of the larger social liver. Weak dribble from anal mouths, a subtle cue from know-nothings for have-nots, thinking of ferocious diddle blurting incantations from a box of fuck fantasies. Well, you know, in the old days, in this, these hospitals, especially the state hospitals, they used to use drugs as punishment. Uh, I remember the first time I demanded a lawyer, they told me to wait. And then about the fourth or fifth time I demanded a lawyer, they told me to wait. And I submitted it in writing, but I was in a rush to get out. So I just raised the fucking roof. I didn't assault anybody. My head went off. You know, they salted me down with so much medication, I couldn't, I couldn't get a spoon of food from my tray to my mouth. That's how much Thorazine I had in me. And in order to eat, I had, a for, I had to put my face into the tray on the table and suck it up. You know what I mean? Hey, Paula, listen, it's dead balls. Listen, I spent a couple of tough days here. I just want to let you know I'll be calling you tomorrow morning about 9 o'clock, if I can get up, because I've been having trouble getting to sleep with this depression I'm in. Bob will explain it to you. I'm sure he understands my letter, and I'm sure maybe even you were expecting it. you living for? Did you ever wake up in a mood like that? Did you ever just wonder, what the fuck am I alive for? What's it all about? It isn't about anything and it ain't worth the fucking trouble. Best to snuff it out. So this is a great cemetery in the city of New York. These are our true psychotic cities. Everybody who dies is in a permanent state of catatonia. I want to be remembered with the countless millions who are fortunate enough to have a decent place to live when they're dead. Eternal life, eternal forgiveness. They expect God to be Forgiving and loving, some shit like that. None of this Norse sword and swastika and cutlery between the clenched teeth business. You gotta stop and think that death is the ultimate resolution of all life forms. All forms of life die. Whether it's the unborn seed, the blade of grass, or uh, the dinosaur who will never rear its stupid head again. It's like Christmas any day of the year here. You're close to your loved ones, and they lie up there as you knew them in life. But man, they're stone cold dead. They're not even a memory of a memory. They're lying in that box like a stiff piece of frozen shit.
Everybody wants me to borrow twenty dollars so I can get some coke. I won't lie to you. So tomorrow morning, Paul, I'll get your money order. They said I'm the star of the film. The least, if I'm not getting paid, the least I should be able to do is get a loan. You expect me to make a speech, or a long-winded, hard-ass speech? Slam jam. Okay, fish eyes, you're next. Faggot, druid, cocksucker. How is your scratch zone? Can two men have one identity and share an alias? I comb my beard with crumb fingers and whisper at the rat shadows. How's your mother doing? Chew the corn direct from her slop jaw. Tongue thrust and rive French laughter. I am fish eyes again. I want a lush roll with the dead. All perversions are one to me. I am sacred and my throat burns. Kiss their ass, shovel their curses, and put a hard on of comfort around them while they expire and rot like chilled, dirty ice. Well, I broke this hand, not to be like Van Gogh, but I was an art student at the time. I broke it over a woman. I didn't mail her my hand. I certainly did a job on it. I broke it deliberately. The bone is fractured right there. That's bent on the end, and the knuckle's been flattened out numerous times since then. Uh, I've had my ration of Van Gogh's life. My, my father said he not only did he suffer atrociously, but he was crazy, you know? He was a maniac. Uh, he said, look at the disturbed look in his eye. That isn't a sane look in his eye. Now, I find a lot of steadiness and peace, and it's a steadfast look in that man's eye. It's a beautiful look. He became my first, my first hero, his work and his life, or my first awareness that a person could lead an undiscovered life. And I've had my share of tormented existence, not only because I'm crazy and go around breaking my bones, but because I haven't published much as a writer, I'm largely an unfulfilled poet. I have no hopes and no prospects of getting any further, of getting what I want. What I want is to earn my living as a writer, and I haven't made a motion to do that. I don't even know if I'll be able to write in here. I haven't written a poem in about a year. We'll see where I end up from here, on the street or in the Bowery or hit solid gold and uh, write a book of poetry that's uh, a classic. <laughs>